Channel 4 News can tonight reveal documents which show that community leaders in Tottenham in North London repeatedly warned the police that the tr that trouble was likely in the aftermath of the shooting of Mark Duggan. Officers were urged to go out into the community to provide reassurance, but the police, worried about prejudicing an independent investigation into the shooting incident, felt their hands were tied. Our Home Affairs correspondent Simon Isgel has this exclusive report. <laughs> This was the scene in the heart of Tottenham nearly a fortnight ago. Virtually an entire high street facing destruction. Residents' homes in flames, people's businesses looted. The spectre of the 1980s back to haunt this area of North London. But could this all have been prevented? Should the authorities have done so much more in the aftermath of a police shooting? It was 48 hours from the moment Mark Duggan was shot by police here to the moment the first police car was set alight in Tottenham. That was a crucial period. That was a time when misinformation circulated unchecked, when warnings about tensions rising to police went unheeded, when there were failures of communication and failures of responsibility. This was the scene just after the shooting. Once CPR had failed, once Mr. Duggan was pronounced dead, jurisdiction for the killing automatically passed to the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Within hours, both the IPCC and the police were saying there'd been an exchange of gunfire. By the following morning, word on the street was Mark Duggan, born and bred on Broadwater Farm, had been executed. No one had yet made contact with Mr. Duggan's parents. As night fell, some 400 people had gathered at the Duggan's family home on the estate to pay their respects. Tensions were rising. Mark's father was heard saying that he believed police had murdered his son. Ken Hines was at that gathering. He liaises between the black communities and the police. What did you come away from that gathering thinking? I, I come away thinking, boy, you know what? If this isn't handled carefully with sensitivity, and, and, and the right action is done at the right time, there are going to be an escalation. There will be trouble. At around 7 a.m. Saturday morning, he got a call. Police in Tottenham wanted him at an urgent gold group meeting that lunchtime about the situation. They weren't informed as to what the tension or the likely reaction was going to be. Channel 4 News has obtained the confidential minutes to this crucial meeting seven hours before Tottenham was to go up in flames. It records police being warned over and over again by community representatives. One said, the word on the street is that this was an execution and that the community are not happy. Another said, there's a lot of distrust and urged police should be out in the community. The officer who chaired the meeting, Detective Superintendent Gurdup Singh, at one stage said, our hands are tied with what we know and what we can say. And later said, we want to recommend to the IPCC that they communicate to reassure the communities. Do you think this gold group meeting achieved anything that Saturday lunchtime? No. No, didn't. Nothing at all. I have to make notes as to what was said before things had actually kicked off. The Mets say the concerns were passed on to the IPCC, but to who and when is unclear. But as a consequence, there was no reassurance on the streets. And for the Met, things were going to get worse. As the hours ticked by, the superintendent went off. Junior officers at Tottenham were left to deal with an impending demonstration by Mark Duggan's family. They wanted answers about the shooting. They waited and waited. The shutters at Tottenham Police Station came down. What they finally got was a chief inspector. What they wanted was a more senior officer. We were peaceful. We didn't make no trouble. And it just escalated. Once we didn't get no answers, they were angry people. By now, dark clouds were looming. The IPCC was finally contacted at 8 o'clock that night, 20 minutes before the first police car was set on fire. The demonstrators, frustrated at the way they'd been treated, made plans to leave. But by this time, a large crowd was milling around. And more and more people are coming. So you had the football crowd, some of the football crowd still walking through as well. So you didn't know there's a lot of swell 
to, to the situation. Then you had the young people who had gathered in one corner, <laughs> looking quite menacing with their balaclavas on. An hour later, there was another call to the IPCC that Tottenham had erupted. National guidelines on police and IPCC contact with the communities laid down by chief police officers had proven inadequate. Police felt they were gagged. The IPCC believed local community policing issues were not its primary concern. Quite clearly, the Metropolitan Police can stand back and say, look, it was the IPC's responsibility. The IPCC can turn around and say, well, we weren't kept fully informed. Then you have, again, a very difficult situation arising in a very volatile community. The Metropolitan Police told Channel 4 News tonight, senior officers were aware of some concerns being expressed by particular community leaders. However, they had no definitive intelligence to indicate that events would escalate as quickly and as violently as they did. The IPCC says it's reviewing how it handled the entire case and is now engaging with communities directly to obtain their feedback. Some in those communities see the Metropolitan Police as impotent. Many have memories of 25 years ago when Broadwater Farm was the scene of ugly and violent riots. They wonder now what happened to the lessons which were learned then.